Welcome back to Talkville. Welcome the- back. Well, those dreams that you've seen since I don't know. That was a great show. Welcome back, Connor. Anyway, this is the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast where each week we go back. Tom and I and Ryan here, we go back. We watch every episode of the show. We discuss it with all of you. That's right. Thanks for tuning in. We were just in, um, where were we, Tom? We were just in Dallas. Dallas. And it was great seeing all the fans. It's, we were, we were uh, amongst amidst all these supernatural fans and they welcomed us with open arms and uh so it's nice it's nice to go to these cons and you know have fun and see you guys but thanks for all this we gotta bring ryan to one of these he'll be he'll be so bored but at least he'll you know what i I always wanted to go to columbus ohio so yeah Hmm, i'm sensing sarcasm (laughs) well i'd hope so because i'm laying it on you pretty thick I love uh, the people of Columbus. Uh, Talkville <laughs> Podcast on Facebook. Our handles at Talkville Podcast on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Talkville Pod on the Twitter. Write a review. Tell us what you think about the podcast. You can go on Apple, Spotify. But if you write a review, it really helps the podcast in the rankings. So make that happen. And, make and, us soar. Help and us by soar. the and by the way, Ryan, Columbus, Ohio is actually a really fun con. Yeah. So was it? Yeah. Stick well, that in your hat. Yeah. Don't <laughs> knock Columbusians. <laughs> Columbians. Columbusians. <laughs> Ohioans. Right. Columbus right. ends. I take it back. Sorry. Um, also, thank you to all our lovely patrons who keep this podcast going. We couldn't do it without you. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Join today. It's a family. Um, and you really help the podcast. If you if you can do it, great. You know, I know, I know, I, I know I keep interrupting you. Maybe that's my mode today, but you're just talking about being in Dallas, and we meet people at these cons who are patrons and they come up, and it's like such a different experience because there's already instant love. Yeah. It's like a lot of fun. Yeah, we do a Smallville Nights at most of these cons, and the reception is just, I have not honestly seen one person, because I don't care about anything, you and I both agree, that anything. if one person walks out of there unhappy or this wasn't worth it, we're disappointed. We we won't, yeah. we won't. don't want that to happen. So we go, we really go above and beyond and put all our energy and love into it. And if you ever get a chance to go to Smallville Nights, uh, well, we're doing one in Atlanta, Georgia, for creation on uh, March 4th. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. We'll be signing there with the boys. So if you're in Atlanta, come see us. Also, if you don't get a chance, if you didn't get a chance to call, and a lot of people are telling me these at, at this at the cons, Tom as well, call our hotline. Leave a message, a question for this episode or an episode in the future. And um, all that info and more is, is down in the show's description, what you can see on, on the handles and when you watch it or listen to it. But Tommy, it's good to see you. Ryan, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to see you. Yep. It feels like a while. Tom was filming and we didn't get a chance to do these. So it's like, you know, it's fresh. It's like, holy crap, we haven't done this. And without further ado, let's get into season two, episode six, Redux. I took a lot of notes on this one. I, I watched it on an airplane. And what I did, I didn't have a pen or paper, so what I did is I texted myself. And I've got too many notes now that I look at it. So anyway, at least I have stuff to talk about. Here's how good the episode was. I watched it a week ago or two. Didn't remember it at all. (laughs) Watched it again and realized, I think I saw this. (laughs) And then I was pissed at myself that I did that. Now, uh, I have some, you know, th- you know, we, we, we're going to talk, we each have our own feelings about stuff, but you know, uh, I have my thoughts for this one. Let's, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But, uh, I'm glad you have notes. I'm glad, happy to explore them. Uh, Ryan, yeah. you have your three things picked out already. Totally. Well, you better do he's, that. He's now. waiting. <laughs> he's waiting. So we don't get into any discrepancy. I, I, I will say this. And I think this is kind of funny. All right. I mean, my sense of humor is stupid, but. I don't remember shooting this episode so much. Um, but when I watched it, some things came back to me for sure. Yeah. You know what's weird? I do remember this episode. You do? I remember thinking to myself, boy, is this boring. I, I, I swear to God, I remember being in the principal's office and going, was that okay? Was that what? I don't I don't know. It's, it's like it just, the energy seemed, and um, but I thought the the guest stars were really good, which we'll talk about. Well, the principal, real quick, was 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 excellent, and part of part of the pro, part of the challenge in in what we do as as careers is, you know, and I know we're going to get to but when Lex drops Clark off and he's late, and the principal's there, and that character 
is not inviting or open or does not care and does not like you as another character, that's a challenge as an actor. True. You got to like, kind of, you kind of have to like duck and weave through the scene. Yeah. And you're never going to feel like you ever really got anywhere because that character doesn't allow you to. So he did a good job with that. Yeah. Look, I thought the guest stars were great. Maggie Lawson as Chris yeah. Parker, who, if you wait a few minutes, you're going to talk to her. She's going to be on a little <laughs> later. And, you know, it's tough because Maggie's part, she was the guest star. She was the lead guest star along with the principal, but she was sort of like the freak of the week. And she had some fun stuff to do, but she didn't have a ton of stuff. Usually that guest star has a lot of stuff. Yeah. And what she had, she kicked ass with. But, you know, I noticed like there wasn't a ton of screen time, was there? No, we had like three B stories in this episode, which to me was a little confusing. Yeah. I felt like... Nobody really got enough screen time. And I mean, they all did great. Like, don't get me wrong. But like, I feel like this could have been three different episodes, this whole episode. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't. George Coe <laughs> as William Clark, Richard Gant as Principal Terrence Reynolds, Sarah Jane Redmond as Nell Porter. <laughs> Richard Gant, by the way, was in Rocky Five. He played like the Don King-esque George Washington Duke. Oh, yeah. He was in Deadwood. He was in uh, Men of a Certain uh, Age. He was in Miami Vice. Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. He's been in a ton of stuff. In fact, he was in The Big Lebowski. Uh, Maggie Lawson, <laughs> we all love her. She's done tons of work, but we, she's famous for Psych which was a hit, big hit oh, yeah. show. And she's been on my Inside You podcast. I love her. And uh, do you think Maggie's going to show up for well, us and be yeah, like 87 years old? Like her <laughs> character? What? Oh, yeah, because of the <laughs> aging thing. Right. <laughs> Just uh, like the director, this aired Redux October 29th, 2002. Chris Long was the director. Garrett Lerner and Russell Friend were the writers. Don't remember them. I, this might be the only well, thing they wrote. Well, me, I don't know. well. Uh, the synopsis was Smallville High celebrates Spirit Week while also under attack by someone draining people's souls. The Kents battle financial trouble and are forced to reconcile with Martha's father for help. Also a good actor. Um, here's a little yeah. rundown and we can we can get into it. The episode opens with Smallville High students uh, swimming during swim class. Clark faces off against Troy Turner for bragging rights. Wait, did, did anyone notice Clark's Clark's shorts almost coming off when he dives into the pool? I know well, those don't feel like um, like regulation swimwear, like like racing swimwear. Not huggers. Yeah, no. Oh, you want to do the speedos? Yeah, you guys are wearing like boxers. Well, it's the CW, <laughs> and no one wants to see Clark. But, don't they, but by the way, speedos. But Ryan, it is the, but it is the CW. Yes, but speedos aren't cool. So you don't want to see Clark, <laughs> the star of a series, in a speedo. Is that does that ruin it? Is and that he's not on the diving times. team, so I let that go. Out of all the things I didn't want to let go, wore, oh, I mean, well, he wore like those long, like as it, was that technology not a thing yet? Those like long, like leggings that Michael Phelps was wearing. I don't no, know. no, it was not a thing. <laughs> it was definitely not. <laughs> only a couple of years out before diving in. Troy gets a kiss from his girlfriend Chrissy Parker. The race stops midway when Clark realizes Troy is struggling in the water. He goes back to save and pulls him out and sees that he has turned into an old man well didn't we do an episode like this in season one where the, these people are old but they're one of your one of your favorite episodes yeah but it was just yeah, like the one this, at this, the this, nursing home i yeah. don't even like to me that th this episode didn't feel like they wanted to do something original at all like at all we don't want to have an original idea for this episode that's what it felt like to me um i, I will I say that, that al goff uh, text me and I'd like to share it with you. He says, guys, enjoy the duplicity episode. I know you called me a few weeks ago while you were doing Nocturne. I realized the next episode, Redux, which, hmm, was an episode we shot at the end of season one, but we knew it would never make it to air in season one because we ran into a wall with our post schedule. So it was in the can to air at some point in season two because the network order was for 22 episodes and Warners wasn't giving back any money. So it had to stand alone. Now that makes sense. Oh. Which is why Lana's like, oh, we're just friends. And then just moves on like no problem. Yeah, it doesn't. It do Yeah. Oh, uh... it makes sense. Thank you, Al, for, for helping us. Thank you, Al. Um, last time we saw Troy, he was getting beat up by the invisible kid in the locker room. So Troy came back as a guest star. Poor Troy. Poor Troy. 
Back at the Kent Farm, Jonathan is talking with Martha about their financial problems, unsure how they're going to make it another month. Martha suggests they call her father for help. By the way, they're three months behind already. Yeah. Maybe they shouldn't live on such a lavish farm. <laughs> it's like the most beautiful house and farm and every. I mean, this farm's worth millions. That they could sell it. But they probably owe a lot of money to Luther's or something. Clark visits the town to drop off some muffins and finds Lana looking at some old photos of her mother and some mysterious man together being romantic. Uh, so awkward instantly. So awkward. It was. In a good way. Yeah. It's very awkward. It was, you know, it was one of those things in the beginning when they start talking about it. I'm like, okay, who cares? Who, why, why, why do we care about why do we? And th- by the end, I actually thought that story paid off the most. You know, like, hey, my parents, my dad is not my biological father, is what she's insinuating. And my I dad that might still of, be alive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this girl already, her parents died in a meteor shower. And now she finds out years later it wasn't even her father. <laughs> Jeez, man. She's, anyway, Lex shows up and offers Clark we, a ride. We can only hope in our, <laughs> you can only hope in your real life that that would be the case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lex <laughs> offers Clark a ride back to school. I mean, why not? The two arrive, and I hate his glasses. Like my glasses were so cheesy; they were awful. But you know, it was back then, and maybe it was still bad then. I remember seeing it, going, "Oh my god!" The two arrive and run into the new principal, Terrence Reynolds, who isn't fond of Clark's tardiness. Of Lex Pat, Clark, let me tell you, I don't like when you're being tardy. He had a really strict term, uh, strong well, this, presence. This gate is closed at nine a.m. It doesn't open till two thirty p.m. <laughs> Should have known better. It was Lex Luthor. Mm. Hmm. Principal Reynolds catches up with the Chrissy in the halls to discuss Spirit Week. Did you notice that the principal and Chrissy always had like uh, one oneers, one shots, like the camera taking off yeah. the stairs both times and they're yeah. talking? I think they were rushed for time. They just had to shoot it, which is a drag for a guest star. You, you know, you, you mess up, you mess up, gets you in your head, but it's a oneer. You got to do it. I, I also thought like this principal must be exhausted at the end of the day. If he's going around it, every in, individual student talking about their files, wanting to get to know them. I mean, we're talking about a couple hundred kids here. Yeah. That guy, he's thorough. He is thorough. And again, I, I really felt like Maggie nailed it. She's she's playing this part. There's only so much uh-huh. she could do, and she's believable. She's delivering her lines <laughs> effortlessly, and uh, I really like it. I'm also, I, always, I also felt like I was on her side. Like, yeah. why is this guy bugging her so much? Like, leave her alone. Yeah, well killing someone principal reynolds catches up with chrissy bottle we talked about that in the torch chloe begins investigating troy's supposed progeria progeria caused death and principal reynolds's background they're skeptical of him being in smallville with such an impressive resume lana and clark go to decorate the talon for spirit week when aunt nell arrives lana then decides to ask nell about the man in the photo with her mother martha's okay. father william clark visits the kent farm questions why his daughter has chosen the farm life Clark interrupts to meet his grandfather for the first time. He wants William to stay, but William decides to head back to his motel. I just remember him feeling so old school in the best way. Yeah. Like his whole delivery, his whole stands, he just, it was an old school style that he was using that I just loved. It was like, I don't know. I thought, I just really appreciated it. And and it works. It works. And then I- obviously we find out more about the scenario, but yeah, I agree. You know, I was, I thought about that and like, you're right. He really, he just nailed it. He was, he had a lot of presence. He just felt yeah. like that tough, stern guy. Um, yeah. sadly he passed away in 2015. Bro. He was 86 years old. And, uh, you know, just out of idle curiosity here, he was uh, a cast member, oh my gosh, for the first season of Saturday Night Live. What? And voiced the character of Woodhouse in Archer. Uh, hang on. He worked opposite Angela Lansbury in the original production of Mame, which I think won a Tony. Um, he was only credited as a cast member for the first show of Saturday Night Live, even though he's was cast member. Co was used in several other episodes of SNL, but was never again credited. Um, <laughs> wow. He was the head of Dustin Hoffman's character advertising firm in the Academy Award winning Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, yeah, like, I, 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 you know what? That makes sense because I feel like he comes from that era. 
Yeah. Did Columbo. A lot of cool stuff, man. He um, was Columbo? He did video games like Star Wars, The Old Republic. And... Anyway, moving on. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so later on the farm, Jonathan finds out his father-in-law was visiting, and he's still against taking his financial aid for, uh, for, uh, for the farm. Clark thinks whatever happened can't be worse than what's in the storm cellar. Jonathan reveals that in the past, he ended up punching his father-in-law after William was against Jonathan asking for his blessing to, to marry Martha. He asked for his blessing, and before he could leave the room, the grandfather tried to push him out, and Jonathan punched him in the face. Yeah. That's the big, that's a big thing. That is a big thing. You know, I think that... Jonathan's got a little temper like that, you know? It's, it, it's always in defense of family, but yeah. Yeah. Lana continues to prepare the talent for Spirit Week and asks her business partner, Lex Luthor, to do some digging into the mystery man in the photos with her mother. In the torch, Chloe gets the autopsy of Troy Turner and learns he didn't have progeria, and it was like the youth from his pituitary glands was sucked right out of him. Principal Reynolds interrupts Chloe, sharing his info with Clark, and invites him into the principal's office. And Reynolds is I, I will say this real quick about Allison. This episode... What, one of my takeaways, Allison was on fire this yeah, episode. She was great. She was like very she, natural. Very natural. She, she was every scene, she hit all the beats. And obviously, we have this scene coming up between her and Clark. She was just there, man. Like, you just saw some chops. Yeah. For sure. She was a talent. Reynolds is concerned about Clark's relationship with Lex Luthor and wants to Clark, write, uh, Clark to write an essay about what his future holds. Clark goes to write this, his essay at the torch to avoid being at home and runs into Chrissy who makes a negative comment about her life, about life after high school and getting old. He also talks with Lex who we learned had to write a similar essay. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought that was a nice little story point that maybe didn't have to be there, but was, you know, when Lex is like, he asked me to do the same thing. I, I thought agree. that was a good, it's a good thing for Clark and Lex to sort of like kind of big brother, kind of like this happened. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that too. Uh, you know, Ryan hasn't said anything yet. Ryan, do you have any comments on any of this? He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, wake up. What, what do you want? Where, where, you're on. What Action. You to, well, I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, are you interested in anything at this point in the episode? Because uh, we have five storylines going right now. There were a lot <laughs> of storylines. Um, you Go know ahead. what? Keep, yeah. keep going and I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> you know what? Yes, sir. Backstage <laughs> at the town, Chrissy goes to check on the lights that fellow student Russell B Burton is preparing. She uses the opportunity alone with him to give the kiss of death, thus sucking the youth from him. I thought the CGI started out really good and then kind of just went to shit for the last second of that shot. Maybe it was tough. I mean, it was it was just it wasn't a great special effect show. I felt like it was really we were had run out of money on the show. Well, I I mean, yes and no. I I thought when she. Every time she lifted up her hand and it became aged, that creep, that got me. Yeah, got me. I, looked, I don't. Yeah, I don't doubt yeah. that. There was just a few things when the old thing. It just was kind of cheap. It just didn't look great to me. But the hand, I think, did. <laughs> but the ending, we'll get to that. Back on the farm, Clark tries to surprise Jonathan with his grandfather William so they can mend their relationship, but it goes poorly, and Jonathan goes full Clint Eastwood, telling him to get off my land. Yeah. <laughs> You have a rendezvous with my asshole. Um, you know, it was kind of cool seeing those guys go at it. You could tell there was bad blood, and um, it looked it looked like they were both upset. Yeah, and you know what? Um, maybe I'm ahead of myself, but <sighs> there were so many years that went, um, that went by that they never saw each other and he was never in their life and um there's that moment in the kent kitchen where you realize you know they're protecting clark because they thought he would yeah and you're like wait so this is my fault <laughs> and annette yeah martha kind of goes well kind of was <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's because of you yeah it was because we of did you. this for you we did this for you it's yeah. sort of like i was ready for her to go no it wasn't about you it was about trust it was about you know but she kind of was like yeah was, well buddy <laughs> there, there, <laughs> well, there's, there's also there's also this, this thing about children where until you are able to grow up enough to understand context in different people's scenarios in a given situation, children grow up 
thinking it's all, everything's their fault. Oh yeah. And Clark's simple minded of like, oh, let me do the math. You haven't talked in 20 years. It can't be that bad. This is what I want. Let's do it. He has no conception of everybody else's situation could or could not be. And that's, I mean, that's limited growth. I mean, he's a teenager. What? Give him a break. Stop being so hard on him. The next day at school, Chloe tells Pete and Clark that Russell died in a similar way to Troy. The only thing that kind of bothers me is, <laughs> it's the character, but Allison, that Chloe's just like, so, so-and-so died around the corner and everything's like this. <laughs> and we're thinking that it's like, dude, somebody died at your school. <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, but there's been a lot of deaths at this school. So I guess maybe it's kind of like big fucking deal, another death. Who cares? Oh, wait a minute. Clark's like, I just saw him. <laughs> it's like, no, well, he's dead. Uh, this makes Clark suspicious of Chrissy um, and leads Chloe to investigate. And then Lex visits Principal Reynolds and asks him to back off of Clark. There was some I also here. saw. Okay, so here's a little thing that I, I that I saw from from Clark's my performance of Clark sitting in the Sitting in the, um, I saw myself trying to get away with some things in this episode, some extra looks, some, some extra reactions, especially when other characters weren't looking for me. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen it before. And this is probably my progression as an actor or character on this, on, on the episode, but sitting in the office and the principal comes behind me and I don't remember he said, but Clark does this like roll of the eye thing. That's me. That's just, that's me being a little bit, you know, a a little bit looser. a little bit looser. So I, there's a little bit of that. I noticed One, that. Yeah. You're kind of like this. You yeah. You get that look of like, <sighs> Jesus. Yeah. I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. That's not written. Yeah. You know? And I was like, oh, cool. Look at you, you little smart ass. <laughs> yeah. Doing that stuff. Uh, the other thing, the blanket statement, when you, when you direct an episode, there's like three things you need to know. What, how are you going to get into the scene? How are you going to get out of the scene? And what is the scene? What is the thing you need from the scene? Right? From an actor, there's other things to consider, whatever, but that's the simplest version. Almost every scene in this episode had horrible outs. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, people just walking out of frames. You know, you know, you remember the smallville thing is like you go in and then you cut. It was unmotivated. Nothing seemed like it. Everything really meant everyone was just leaving frames everywhere. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, anyway. Lana meets up with Clark in the loft, holding an envelope with the information about the mystery man and her photos. Nervous to learn the truth of who he is, Clark then vents about his past situation with his grandfather. Determined to improve their relationship, their future relationship, he goes to visit William. Here's the only thing that didn't happen. Maybe I'm shitting on it now, but we all know that this is not Clark's grandfather. This is Clark's adopted mother's father. I, I would have liked a little more of, mom, I see that you don't have this relationship. I would like this for you. Like a little, like could have just a little bit of that. Yeah. Like, you like know, what but you're saying whatever. is like, it could have been like, okay, um, Jonathan doesn't have any relationship with him. It doesn't mean you can't go visit your father and you and I go visit the father. I mean, that doesn't make sense. It's like, why can't you just have a relationship with me and my mother at this point? Right, Cause it's, cause it's not his grandfather. So that bumped for me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Back at Smallville, Principal Reynolds meets up with Chrissy in the halls again in a one letting her know he hasn't been able to get in touch with her parents and wants to get <laughs> to know world. Chrissy and her family more. So they plan to meet at the Talon before a Spirit Week event. In the torch, Chloe shares her findings with Clark about the mysterious string of progeria or progeria-like deaths in schools that surround Chrissy going all the way back to 1921. And at the Talon, Reynolds shows up to meet with Chrissy's parents but finds her alone. When she appears from the shadows, we see her face has aged rapidly. Chrissy knocks out the principal backstage, and Clark shows up to stop her before she can suck the life out of him. That was the moment where I thought about the deer on the Highway 55. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a repeat. It was a repeat, and the whole bucket where she knocks him out was kind of, you know, it was a little cheesy. And then, you know, and they show that little, I I don't know, it just, you know, tossing Chrissy on her back. It was a nice stun, I guess. She had to end with something, but it happened so fast. I, it, it just you know, it, 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 it wasn't that good. If you look at the momentum of it, and I think this is something that I got better at as time went on, It she never came toward me before I threw her. It was like a, oh, it didn't match up to my eye when I saw it. So, But we, I think we learned from that. 
Welcome to Talkville. We'll tell you everything wrong with yeah, every episode. Yeah, you know what? This, this episodes like this happen. I think we got some good ones coming up, though. Um, when we see her face, uh, Chrissy's face has grown even more old and decrepit. Chrissy states that she's saving people by killing them before they grow old, which is complete horse shit. <laughs> I mean, what? What kind of freaks you? No, before I'm I mean, saving. Them. No, no, you're what? Because there is not more we'll have to, to life ask than her about that. Spirit Week. There, there's not more, not more to it. That's a classic line. Clark stops her attack, throwing her into uh, through a banister. Her aging continues to get worse until she turns into a corpse and then bursts into ashes. The scene mirror similar similarities to the Phantom Zone in the first two Superman movies. Uh, yeah, I guess I could see that. Clark returns oh. home to give his parents the check that William gave on his way out. Jonathan tells Clark that they had to keep his grandfather away so he didn't learn Clark's secrets. That night in the loft, Lana visits Clark, who is finishing his essay. And we never, and we never talk him about. We never, never talk about again. him again. She tells Ever. him what she's learned in Lex's file that her parents actually divorced at one point and were separated for a year, meaning that the man in the photo might be her real papa. The highlights and lowlights. I think the biggest highlight was the end of the episode and the credits coming up. No, um, I would say <laughs> there were some nice moments with Clark and Lex. The storyline with Lana was was a nice little story. It was sad and it was like, I'm, I'm curious as to what's going to happen there. Um, unfortunate was the situation with Clark and his grandfather that he'll never have a relationship with. Um, you know, those are the things that you take away, you know. Um, I think a positive takeaway is that something you and I discussed before and Annette was very vocal about is like she wanted her character to have a story. And I think this was a way to shine a little more light on it. I thought, it, I thought that that family dynamic was interesting for sure. Yeah. How yeah, it played you know out. Uh, nah, but look, look, this is, this is just another one of those scenarios where the Jonathan and Martha Kent of it all, we can't tell anybody because it's not safe. Whereas it's, it's Martha's dad. Like maybe, maybe he would understand. Maybe he would help. Maybe yeah. he has access to, I, I, well, let me know. Redux finished principal photography shortly after filming for Tempest, that Tempest ended, which was just before the crew went on their summer break. About This is probably why Clark sends Pete away before he goes to fight Chrissy. Makes sense. I was like, what the fuck? At that point oh, yeah. in the show's storyline, Pete is still unaware of Clark's abilities. Some lines were dubbed and indicating its placement later in season two, such as Lana discussing Clark's secretive and, uh, secretiveness and Martha working for Lionel Luther. This makes a lot more sense though, because I watched this episode and the next episode, tune in for our next episode. And there was so, the next episode you'll find Pete is like in cahoots with Clark to break the law using Clark's abilities. So this makes sense now because I felt like there was such a jump there. But yeah, this episode was out of order. So there you go, out of order. In the Your episode Honor. Redux, there is a reference made to Coast City which Tom says, Clark says, which was the one-time home of DC Comics superhero Green Lantern. Um, Green Lantern or Green Arrow? Arrow. Oh, Lantern. Arrow is, is, Star Lan is Starling City. This says Green Lantern. Oh. Green Lantern's DC. Green Lantern is DC. But I'm saying Green Arrow was Starling City. You know who wouldn't know that? Hmm. Me. I wouldn't well, have any idea. You. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm telling Let's you. Let's call him Mel. He might know. One of the notes I had is I want to make you a t-shirt, Michael, because Lex in this episode says, I'm the king of family dysfunction. <laughs> That's I want amazing. to make you a t-shirt that you can wear at the cons for that. I'm the king of family dysfunction. Um, um, says, I also have here that spirit um, week and cheerleading. horrible. Yeah, there's more to life than spirit week and um, cheerleading. <laughs> cheerleading. Yeah. I also have here horrible wardrobe, like horrible. Yeah, my glasses were an atrocity. No, I mean... Clark with khakis. It's just like, yeah, no. Um, horrible out scene. Swim shorts almost fall off. Um, I found myself wanting more of Pete because I thought Pete was fun when he was in it. Yeah. Um, the Lex, the, the principal Lex crossover storyline, I got my attention pretty well. Um, I think we should get Kelly and Brian as guests. Yes. The writers and sure. future. Um, and I also saw that Clark was emotionally isolated the entire episode. He was like a man adrift with no one to talk to. Well, he talked to Lana. And a little bit of Lex. Yeah. But he was, he couldn't even really talk to his dad because of what his dad was doing. It was, it would have been a difficult week. All right. Now it's time. Here it is. Maggie Lawson. Mags. What's Hi, up? team. Hi. Rosie, it's so good to see you. Good to see you. So good to see you. 
Tom, well, you I'm, as well. I haven't seen you since the episode. It's only been 20 something years, but you look amazing. And I was joking earlier, we had a couple false starts, but I was joking earlier that I, I said to Rosie, I expect you to show up as like an 87 year old woman from the show yeah. because we just watched it last yeah. night. But yeah. You know what? I thought about it too, but just the makeup, it just, it takes way too long. <laughs> and, uh, and the mask is really gross now, even though I still have it. The prosthetic, you guys, that was a, that was one of the scariest experiences of my life. I have, I'm claustrophobic. So getting fitted for that prosthetic was, was wild. Was that worse than seeing the image like in the mirror? Oh, no. Oh, no, it wasn't worse. Not, <laughs> nothing was worse than that. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, we, yeah, Michael, made, a, Michael made a funny comment because in watching the episode, he was able to see that a good majority of your scenes with the principal were like oneers, and here you are coming in yeah. and playing a really great character. And they're like, cool. Every shot you have is a oneer, And that's <laughs> not fun. It, it's not, but I don't know the show. I feel like, I mean, I, that's funny. You said that. Cause I, I did rewatch some of it and I, I noticed that and I, I remember shooting that, but like, you know how it is. You got to go, you got to go so fast and you got to make stuff. And look, I'm the guest star. Like you don't spend time on me. You get my scenes done. You get them out of the way so you can focus on them ones that like, not the guest star scenes don't matter, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just yeah were you nervous? I was moving this. Um, for this one. Yeah. It didn't seem it's it, always nerve wracking. It didn't it didn't huh? seem that way. No, you, you seemed very so confident. Cool and casual. Yeah. Yeah. You were I confident. don't know. I don't know how I feel about me seeming so confident and casual playing a psychotic person who sucks things <laughs> out of people. <laughs> I don't know about this guy. Good but, point, uh, good point. No, I was very um <laughs> I remember at the time some friends had come up to do episodes and they talked about how fun it was, like because all of the guests most guest stars had like this uh, you know, we were taking on a pretty wild character, usually a villain or like freak of the week know, kind of thing. Yeah, freak of the week. Yeah. So you get to come up and do something fun, but it's always nerve wracking. Um, you know, walking into a, you know, a, a family basically. I mean, these people have been working together for so long. You're the new person. It's the first day of school. It's always like nervous, but everyone was so nice. I do remember that. It was yeah. a. It was wild. It's so weird watching that. Like it's. 2002 oh my god yeah that's 20 it was Crazy. 21 years ago yeah. was was honestly well, the makeup we, we all are so good we also should tell maggie that it was shot out of order yeah and it was sh and it was aired out of order at least yeah which you may so, not so know we're yeah. very honest about episodes when we watch them and when we don't like feel like we, like so this is an episode where we didn't really love and we're like why didn't we and then we got news from the creator like because you were great and the principal's great the acting's great but the story was just kind of mm. like and it was because they shot it in season one. They didn't have much money. They ended up airing it sometime as episode six of season two. And all these other things have kind of transpired. And it was like, what is this? It came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I didn't so, even know that. I well, didn't yeah, even know that. You didn't. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's so I think when that's why when I watched it, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what, now, when you do, when you do your <laughs> podcast, because you have a rewatch podcast, Psych, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And Can we be guests yeah, on yeah. it? Do you have guests and also? Oh my do you god, I would love, love that. Let's, would you guys? Yep. Would you guys come chat yeah. this, about Psych with us? Yeah. I mean, don't you and have Rosie, to have watch every episode though? Every episode. No. Every episode. No, I'm saying, do we well, have then, to no. have watched every episode? <laughs> oh no, no. I thought do you mean as we host? Do we? Of course, we watch every episode. No. No. You. You know, you can know a little bit of. We could talk shop. We could talk about the business. We could talk about being on culty. You know, I mean, Smallville was huge. Like it was such a such a big thing at the, at the at the time. It still is. I see you guys are doing like all the conventions and everything mm. too, which is yeah. very fun. Doesn't Chrissy need to scare some people at a small? <laughs> I, you know, that would be um, kind of you fun. Have, you have to wear. I'm key, you guys. You have to bring your makeup. Wear the prosthetic. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? You know um, what? We do. Um, so we go to cons, and I'm sure you've gone to cons and. Psych is one of the biggest yeah. shows. People loved it. Talk about a show that became sort of cult. You've done movies. You have an endless amount of followers. 
it's a great show. People loved working with the cast and all that. But like, you know, we talk about, you know, well, what if we had a Smallville convention where it was all the guest stars from every episode or any episode yeah. we can get them? They come and they sign. We take group pictures, giant group pictures of all like, I mean, there's three yeah. people in a picture of all the, it, it could be really fun. We should, we should think about doing something like that. I think it'd be a blast. Get Maggie to come. Do you, wait, do you not have one? Why no. I've never done a Smallville, a Smallville convention, convention, like a Smallville no, Supernatural oh. has one, which is a big deal. And like, I know um, there's a show that I was on, Lucifer. They kind of have a couple, but somehow the Smallville thing hasn't really. Maybe we need you. Maybe that's what we need. Yeah, yeah. You guys, I'll 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 jump in and 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 I'll make it happen <laughs> <laughs> hey, for everyone. Do you remember? Like you were talking about the makeup. Was it how long did it take to put that makeup yeah. on at the very end for the old lady? I was thinking about it, and I think it was about. I want to say three to four hours, maybe, oh. and the fitting, the fitting, the the yeah, I guess the like prosthetic, the day where they get that they make the cast, you know. Um, I was so I was more scared about that. I was I had my own anxiety about coming onto a you know a set and you're the new person and yada yada. But like, uh, I knew once I got through that part of the the process, the pre process, I was gonna be I would I would be better the guys by the way who i don't remember their names but the guys who would do those the makeup and the prosthetics they were so kind and so patient i do i remember that because i was like totally shaking freaking out and they just make you know they just cut out little yeah. eyes and like a little nose oh. and whatever <laughs> you could breathe well <laughs> and actually i don't even think they cut out the eyes yeah no i agree i <sighs> think it's sometimes like sound the people who are in sound People who are in wardrobe, people who are the editors and the producers you talk to when you loop, you they need to have a patience because that's what it needs in that job. And I remember I, only a few times that I go in and the, those same guys, I did like a body cast once, I did like a three quarter cast and it's like really odd because we don't do it all the time, but they do. And they do a really good job right. of calming you down, make you feel comfortable. And without that, it's scary as hell. Yeah. It's, it's I, I remember crazy. when I did it, Maggie, I- because then they put all the blue stuff all over you and they mold it and it gets really tight and it feels like it's just sucking the she's like, life she's out of you. She's anxious right now. Dude, I, I hate it. I was, like, I, I, go, guys, like, guys, ah. I was like, you gotta hurry, you gotta hurry, you gotta hurry. I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. <sighs> oh shit, oh. oh shit. You know, it's just yeah. really, and, and you know, that's I think one of the reasons like, when I think about like going back on to do another, if I want to ever do a, one hour or stuff, if they're like, yeah. yeah, makeup. And I told you, Tom, I won't say the role, but I, I turned something down. And then I yeah. hear from the actor that did it. And I didn't tell him anything. I just said, Oh, cool. Uh, it's three or four hours a day in makeup to get shit on. And here's, yeah. and here's the other thing. When you do it, you don't know how the, how long the process is. They do a good job of calming you down. Don't worry. It won't take that long. It won't take that long. And then they say, okay, you're done. But then they have to take it off oh. slowly. And that's even more and anxious yeah. because you're like, just fucked. take it off. But you can't. Yeah. it's. I, I remember yeah. I remember sitting, because the second they say, like, don't do something, I think it was like, don't open your eyes. There were a lot of, like, don'ts, you know? It's like all you want to do. Yeah. It's our brains are just, like, wired that way to be like, oh, I just need to open my eyes. I remember shaking. I remember they put on some, like, really nice, soothing music for me. Um uh, it was they were they were they were they were really they were really good i i kind of liked that i loved creating that yeah on a daily basis my god i could see where that's like a lot to incorporate into the work but at the same time i i i, I like turning into something else i thought it was really yeah. i thought it was kind of fun cool. do you want to hear a fun fact yes oh. yes fun fact please that's not my voice as you know at the end Oh, it wasn't? It's not my voice. No. And I didn't know it until the episode came out. You guys. So I know these memories are kind of coming back to me a little bit where I was like, did they, was there something wrong with this episode? And now you're saying they pushed it into season two. And so maybe I, that's all part of it. But I remember there was, um, when we were doing the scene, I think he was like, somebody said like lower your voice lower your voice like just to give her some age because she's now older and i hadn't like worked on that or probably like it wasn't 
sort of discussed. So I'm whatever I did was horrific. <laughs> I'm guessing on the day because the episode came out, and I'm like, that's not my voice. That's you not know my what, voice. Though? It's my performance. It but, worked. Yeah. And I thought it was yours. It just felt like, yeah. don't you know, Clark, creepy that this is whatever it is. It, it just worked. I didn't think it wasn't you. I thought you were putting on some, or maybe they, you know, lowered the tone of your voice or something like that. But it didn't. That didn't. Oh, you distract know what? It could me. be that. Yeah. No, it didn't. It, honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it adds a cool element to like this. This she's a whole different thing. It was just more that like, oh God, what did I do? Right. Do you still get residuals? So um, do you still get residuals from some, that episode? Occasionally, occasionally, I do. Really? It makes me smile. Yeah, I still see an occasional Smallville. I mean, I'm sure it's like forty five cents, but you know, <laughs> um, at this point, but it's it, parking I do. meter. It's parking meter funds. Yeah, it's parking meter funds. Where, Where is a Smallville reunion? By the way, is that happening? Um, can you all no, discuss we're like one of the only shows that they didn't want to they haven't asked us yeah. to do a hey let's do an entertainment weekly or let's do a smallville reunion or let's we, we've never been asked and i'm like i'm kind of offended i'm like dude yeah. we're, we're, you know, I think we're even, Dawson, I think even dawson's shows. creek has one yeah it's like, come on yeah you guys were huge like huge. Well, you, know, you know i guess we didn't impress i everybody. remember what are you gonna do you know yeah. Hey, I did think, you remember? I think, we, I think we can make it happen, though. Hey, did we, you remember we, we uh, your agents going, This is a big deal. You're going to be doing Smallville? Or were they kind of like, eh? Or were they excited about it? They're like, You got some downtime, Maggie. We found this gig. Don't, <laughs> don't, just kind of, don't can worry. Can I tell you something crazy? If I'm remembering this correctly, I didn't read for this. I don't know how it came to me. Yeah. But I remember being like, I think I knew some of the producers or writers involved. I mean, it's so long ago. I'm just putting it all together now. But that was like, uh, I remember, like when I say I, I like they asked me to come. I remember at the time there was some weird connection I had to the show that like someone just asked me to come do it. So there was that, That's which fun. was like the coolest thing and the weirdest thing at the time for me because I hadn't done much work. Like, I don't know where that came from. But I don't think I read for it and I don't know why. Um, and then I remember thinking it was a huge deal because I, like I knew the show and it was already so popular and, you know, this was like a decent, this was a really nice guest starring role. And what's funny is I had hung out with very randomly, like we don't even know each other that well anymore, but we had some friends in common and Amy Adams had done an episode she, yeah she she liked to suck the life out of people too her character similar yes, animals. somebody yeah. said that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know we went up for stuff a lot together especially i mean at the time and you know she was uh we had hung out like right before she went and did her episode oh, and cool. i remember thinking like oh that's so cool she's going to play this like fun villain whatever and then i i was shortly i think right after right I, somewhere i don't know but i remember having I remember hanging out with her right before she did it. It's cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look, well, we love having you on here to come on and just like, what, by the way, what's going on? Are you and Timothy still doing the, uh, they're doing the uh, podcast. Yeah, we, you know, it's uh, so new for us. So like, I mean, I've, as you know, Rosie, when I did your other pod, it was very, uh, I was like, I don't do these. And then lo and behold, I'm like doing, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was really nervous. Do you remember that? Not really. I, I remember being um, great. I don't remember you being, maybe a little, but not. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I was, I was, I had a lot of anxiety about being open and kind of in a public. So it's some, some, yeah, it was, it was whatever, but it was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. I love talking to you. It felt really, it was wonderful. It was safe. It was great. Um, and then like not long after that, a friend of mine, um, had asked me if there was like a psych rewatch podcast and I talked to everybody and what well, they love the idea and Tim and I took them on. And so, um, yeah, we've been doing that and, uh, we're in season four now and we just wow. did a, a live show. Have you guys done that? No. Is that we talked, like we talked about it? Is it fun? It was ma magical. It was because it, it's fans of your show. Obviously, you know, who are going to come see it. They know, there were just a lot of reactions and sharing in that I felt like live it was really cool. It was at Sketchfest, San Francisco Sketchfest. 
Um, and so that that's like our 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 big news of of the last couple of that's weeks. That's great. Because we had our first live punch up. It was very cool. Was but but very were you cool. worried that, yeah. that you were were you worried that maybe no one's going to show up and it was just bigger than you thought? I mean, yeah, I, I think it was taking something like that into like a live setting in a theater is, uh, yeah, it maybe it could have been really embarrassing. Um, and then we found out like a couple about a week before, maybe like five days to a week before that they had uh, sold out. Oh, wow. So That's we cool. Were, we, 400. What? 400? Yeah. <laughs> Tom, we're doing one. We're yeah. going to do the podcast for an hour, and, and then we'll have a guest that's yeah. from Small, and then we're going to do the Smallville Nights afterwards. We'll have an event. It's so, it's yes, very fun. It's very fun, you guys. I highly recommend it, and you all are so great, and you have such a huge, huge following. Like, it, it would be a love fest. It would be so fun, I think. I hope so. I think, I think it'd be great. Well, look, you're an absolute yeah. joy. I love you coming on here for like 20 minutes and just... Kind of same what you remember. You have any other questions? No, this is just that we just <laughs> wanted to hang with you a little bit and say, hey, you know, and you talked about the makeup and you talked about being a guest star and how, you know, you come in and you got to know. It's just. I remember everyone being so nice. All of you being so nice. Did the principal so nice. die? Yeah, he dies. I had, I well, she, we assume that, right? No. I clock him. If, yeah, but if you, you clocked him, I thought it would knock him out, but you didn't suck the life out of him because Clark did that. So apparently he saved, what? Go ahead. No, I, if you're making a, I'm just saying like, yes, you're making a point. He's not, he, he's not dead. I don't know if he's in the next episode. I haven't seen it. What happened to the <laughs> principal? <laughs> that should have been the name of this episode. Um, he's so great. Okay, I great. just, uh, what I love about these podcasts, and I don't know if you find this on yours. I, I just think it's so funny how the actors who are in these episodes literally don't remember 90 percent of anything they did me included like i don't remember filming this episode as i watch it uh -huh. things come back and i don't know if you get that with psych where you're like oh, i don't really recall being there that day where the fans Isn't are that like spooky? how do you not know everything and it's like well you know yeah no i i have we have that all the time although we were a little later so we were 06 uh, when we started but i can tell you the first three seasons it's very spotty going back yeah. and rewatching stuff nothing <laughs> it might be like i might get prompted by you know a, a, a guest like a night out more like the stuff that happened off the set oh. um memory wise yeah that like triggers other memories but it, there is it's really weird it's fun to go back and rewatch I don't even know that I watched all the episodes of Psych when they aired. That, that was a wrap on Terrence Reynolds, principal of uh, Smallville High. That, that was, was it. House. That was a one episode. So I guess he died. They gave him a whole backstory. Take Lex him out to Luke and, and, and bury him in the, in the shit How factory. How did they get rid of him? Jeez Louise. Maggie, I love you. Thank yeah, you for I, doing this. Yeah, thank you. Love you too. Michael, love you. Tom, so good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, come chat anytime you want on ours. I'm happy to come shoot the shit if you ever want on whatever so Thank i you. just uh I love you guys okay you're the best thanks for coming on bye. i'll talk to you soon see you soon bye. okay bye you know one of the one of the quick things i was gonna say to her but i i know that the, the time is kind of running up and we didn't want to keep her too long so she didn't hate us but i wonder if there's something about when an actor goes and acts and they and they go into a character that the way the brain is configured that you know what maybe you don't remember all of it because you're not you you're you're into this zone yep you know and there's nothing to reinforce those moments you go home there's nothing to reinforce throughout the day what what you do in a scene mm -hmm. whereas in your life there's reinforcements you get an argument with somebody it comes up again you know you see people often um i wonder if that's like a thing i don't know here's the hotline questions it's here we go and these are uh top tier patrons i believe if you have any questions uh, that's the hotline. i don't even know if they're top tier patrons is this one a top tier patron it is, yes, this one is a top tier patron. This one's a patron privilege. Go to patreon.com slash talkville. Here we go. Hey all, it's Michael Piccioni from Texas. In the episode Redux and in a few other episodes in the show, there's an end scene with Clark and his loft, and then the camera pans up to the stars, the end credits roll, beautifully shot scenes. I love to hear what goes on behind the camera. How are those scenes pulled off? How are the scenes pulled off, Tom? I guess like when they're going up from the loft, right? 
at the end where they go up from you and you and Lana. I mean, it feels like you're uncomfortably standing there for a long time. And at the very end, when it starts going up, I can know, I know you're getting probably frustrated, but then I see your arm kind of go out. Like I would no, do this. I, mean, the, the, I, I think, I think Glenn winter was even the DP here, which we all know he's a genius, but I, there was something about this episode where the, that all the outs from the scene were not great. And it could be that somebody missed their cue. I'm sure his actors were just standing there waiting for the camera to do their thing, which is why it looks so stagnant. It stayed there too and long. I think they should have sped it up or something. It just, there's no movement. You know, you get, you know, it wouldn't happen if Beeman was there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we all know we love Glenn and he's gone on to be one of the best it's ever been. But this, this could have been early on for him. Yeah. Um, or the Dolly guy fell asleep. Missed his cue, and that's the best take they got. Probably. That happens, too. And, Michael, I remember you. Thanks for the question. I remember you from this weekend. I've met you before, and uh, it's always good seeing you. Thanks for supporting uh, Tom and myself and going to Smallville Nights. It was a joy. Here we go. Voicemails. This is Melody. Melody, what you got for us? Let's see uh, what Melody's going to say. Hi, it's Melody calling from Long Island. Quick question for Season 2, Episode 6, Redux. Why was it never addressed that this is not a meteor freak of the week? This is just a freak. If this went back to 1921, what happened? What's going on? Good, I don't understand. Good point, and I have no you idea. You know, Melody, all I'll say is, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. We have no answers for that. We 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 agree with you. What what is going on? Here's Jason. Let's see what Jason has to say. Melody, thanks for calling in. We love you. Hey, it's Jason from Pittsburgh. Uh, this question is for Season 2, Episode 6, Redux. My question is for both Michael and Tom. Every time Jonathan is speaking to Clark, nine times out of ten, he is using his name, Clark. Clark this. Clark that. Clark, Clark, Clark. Uh, I just find that very unique and wondered if you guys had any idea why uh, that was performed that way or why Clark's name was always mentioned I, when Jonathan was speaking to Clark. I, I just think that was a really great choice that the show made. Thanks a lot, guys. I uh, love you both. Bye. Little, I don't little recall long of a message, but thanks, Jason. I don't recall if it was written that way or not, but I knew that it was Jonathan's way of, or John Schneider's way of the father-son relationship. Listen, Clark. Listen, Clark. Listen, in the show of Smallville, we say everybody's names more than anybody I hate ever says I anybody think else's names. You never forever. should do is tell the character. People know we don't. We don't have to say the character's name over and over. That gets annoying. Some, yeah. some somebody said there was a drinking game where if any character says any other character's name, you have to take a shot. I don't think you can get through the episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just too many names. <laughs> yeah, it's you know it is what it is. Here's Sarah. Let's see if Sarah has a question. Apparently she does if she called the hotline. Make sure you call. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm in Arkansas. I'm calling about Season 2, Episode 6, Redux, in which Jonathan Kent turns into a big red flag. Martha and Jonathan's engagement story sounds more like the start of an abusive relationship than true love, and genuinely makes me wonder why Martha was willing to move to the middle of nowhere with a man with a violent temper. It reads like a horror story and takes away from any and all respect for Jonathan, who can't even put his pride aside so Clark can have a relationship with his only grandparent. What are y'all's thoughts? I appreciate your candor. I appreciate wow. that you were angry. Because, you know... Um, I, I could see your point. I think that they were truly, I, th I think Jonathan and Martha were really protecting Clark from this man who was actually mentally abusive, maybe not physically, but this man, you know, imagine somebody belittling you and calling you a loser farmer and you can't take care of my daughter. And then he kind of pushes you and then you punch him. It's like, you know, who knows what happened in that moment? I don't think he's an abusive guy. I think he defends his family. He's not some guy who will go out and fight somebody randomly. I think he has got a big heart. But I also think that he's, uh, you know, he's uh, he's a country boy. <laughs> you know? I, I, I will agree that there's not a moment in the episode that, that speaks to Jonathan and Martha's reason of being together there. It, it, there's no time. There's too many stories in this episode, like I said. It's really about the dad issue, the Clark issue, the Lex issue, the principal issue, you know, the the girl issue. Like, there's so many other issues, but I agree. It just, without them talking about it, all you get is the actors and the characters sort of sharing each other. 
but yeah, it's not discussed as to why Martha's there with what could seem to be an abusive relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Rosenbaum rating. Rosenbaum rating on this one, guys. Three roses are the best, then two roses you can give halves. Uh, there's a heater right down the middle, and then there's one, two, or three bombs. Um, I'm going to start with this one. Because of the good performances by the guest stars, Maggie, and, uh, you know, the... Um, the principal. The principal. And George Coe, uh, Richard Gant, Sarah Jane Redman, Maggie Lawson. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I think this is a complete throwaway to me. I, I just, I just yeah. didn't. Um, and the relationship with Lex and big brother to Clark. I like some of that stuff and, you know, Lana's storyline. So, but it's definitely going to be, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this a bomb and a half. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it a bomb and a half. I think this is probably the lowest one for me. Have I given two bombs? Yeah. Um, no. But I think this is a one and a half bomb. I think this is, and the studio kind of threw this away and this ended up in episodes. It, it just makes sense. I can't give this more than a bomb and a half. I mean, it would have been completely bomb, rose and bombed if it wasn't for Maggie and for, you know, and they didn't have any choice. I just, it just wasn't, it wasn't great TV. It was, it wasn't a great program yeah. to me. Yeah. It wasn't a great program. <laughs> Don't base it on mine. If you, if you want to give it high praise, go ahead. I already have mine written down. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Ryan, go ahead. Oh, me? Yeah. Um, I was going to go just the heater. I don't think this is a show that I would show somebody if they'd never seen it. I think it's a little confusing. I think it was a little sort of trying to piece things together. There were some great moments, great performances. But, you know, sometimes you get great performances in horrible movies. You know, it's. Um, I think it's just, it's neither here nor there for me. Um, but I think everybody did a great job. It just... Not all the elements came together for this one. That's why. Yeah, I think this episode should have aired in 1983, after like Dynasty. <laughs> then it would have done better. It would have been more appropriate. Ryan? <laughs> no, I was going to say Heater as well. I, I agree with Jesus. Tom. Yeah, just look because yeah. yeah, the guest stars are doing what they can with the material. They're there. They're 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 doing these oneers. They're in the prosthetics. Yeah, I mean, and now like yeah, having like learned that. Um, they shot it in season one. Um, yeah. It sort of makes sense. Also, I was just thinking now, uh, it's kind of a bummer that uh, Lana keeps having these female friends her age that keep getting killed off or like shoved out of town. As soon, like she, as, soon as she makes a friend. As soon as she like makes like 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 a like a, like a girlfriend for life, they get yeah, uh, run yeah. out of town or <laughs> you know, killed. I agree. And then she's got to like, then she's stuck like managing the coffee shop and then like pining over Clark, but not really. I mean, just think. Maggie, you should come work legs. at the coffee shop with me. Yeah, great. Ah, oh, she's dead. <laughs> think, of, think of this, though. She needs a pal. Think of this, guys. I'm just thinking of the writing room. And they're like, okay, so there's this girl, and she sucks the life out of people, and they get they die of old. You know, they're old, and she gets younger. Didn't we kind of do that? No, no, no. Hear me out. And, um, and then Lana finds these pictures of a guy with her mom who passed away, and it might be her real dad. Uh, okay, random, but okay, all right, uh, okay. Uh, why don't we continue the story, though, of what was going on in the first episodes of this year? All right, and then, obviously, I know it was shot out of, out of order. And I, the, I uh, the other writers are so tired working on their stuff. They're like, yeah, sounds great, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then Clark's got this grandfather that he's never seen since he was born because Clark, uh, Jonathan punched him in the face, and they haven't talked in 30 <laughs> years. It just was like... And don't worry, we don't ever have to see him again, either. And then the principal, we see him once, and he dies. Maybe the whole like getting life sucked out is just how the writers were feeling at the time about their own lives. And like <laughs> had the, the show was just getting like by, sucking by the, the life way, out of not, them and they're just aging <laughs> at a rapid Not pace. cost effective to have five guest stars in one episode. <laughs> just not great. Death count, save count. How many people got saved? How many died? Uh, Troy Turner, Russell Burton, and Chrissy were all dead. Hey, and uh, Principal Reynolds, it says saved, but he wasn't saved, was he? He was KO'd, but that, I, I don't think he was killed. Maybe he was just uh, released. Maybe he's in a coma, a Smallville General. Yeah. Through six episodes in season two, eight dead, 12 saved, corrected series count, 38 dead, 47 saved. Ryan's I, favorite scene. My favorite that scene? That is not Hall of well, Fame batting average, by the I way, have, for I have, saving I have dead. written three scenes 
down. The, to me, like the, right. the only three like notable <laughs> scenes. All right, read them out. Uh, but I have a favorite. Yes, in mind. Tom, uh, Tom takes you seriously. All right, so three scenes uh, th- that drew me in in this episode. Uh, uh, the cold open in the pool. Uh, Clark's showdown with Chrissy, scene two, and then uh, Clark and Lana in the loft at the end, where we find out um, that she might have a dead. So, scene one, cold open. Scene two, uh, the showdown with the bad guy, and scene three, the ending. Okay, here's the problem with the third scene. Yeah, it's Clark and Lana together. It's great to, but no information that the audience doesn't already know yet. The pool scene is fine, but you already said you missed the Speedos. Don't. So it has to be number two. Okay, you say number two. I'm going to disagree yeah. with Tom. I think you're going to go with the loft scene because that was the most interesting storyline, and we're waiting to see what happened with her father. I'm going to go three. Ryan? Two. Fuck yourself hard. No, that's the one I... Yeah. All right. I, I don't just... I, I believe you. <laughs> I got it. All right. So uh, Tom won that one. <laughs> there you go. See, I did think about yes. it. Yes. Um, uh, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm like one for 23. <laughs> All right. Guys, uh, it happens. Don't think I'm shitting on the show. I'm just honest. I think it's fun that I give my opinion and I'm always the hard one and then Tom's sort of optimistic and Ryan's sort of in the middle to optimistic. You want that. It makes it more dynamic. If you don't, I don't know what to tell you because I'm going to keep it real. Uh, That's it for this episode. Stick around next week, please, as we trace things back in episode 28, Lineage. Let's take the discussion. That's a fun one. Huh? Yeah. Don't say anything, but I'm excited about this. One. Let's take the discussion online. Let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast or at Talkville Pod. Write a review. It helps. Show your support for the podcast by joining Patreon at patreon.com slash Talkville. Also, the website. There's going to be some really cool stuff on the uh, Talkville website. I think it's talkvillepodcast.com. We've got some really interesting artwork. Um, I hired this cool artist who I loved her work, May, May Charters. She made us an original portrait, a drawing, um, and she made really amazing quality prints, and they're going to be signed, autographed by me and Tom. We've already signed them. There's only 55 made, and they'll be on the website, so you might want to check that out. Um, We're really excited about them. I think they're really cool pieces. And once there's 55 sold, it's done. There's no more prints. We'll find another print to do something. We'll have another original piece of art. But um, So maybe you think that was cool. And uh, I've got some other stuff. I think some headshots we signed as well of Clark and and, and, uh, Lex. Um, Again, if you want more info like merch from the show or a hotline number, you can find all that in the description. Um, Tom, it's always a pleasure, dude. Oh, this is great. This is fun. Ryan, thanks for finally waking up and joining us. I appreciate it. Pleasure. And Ryan, why don't you say, remember, folks. Remember, folks, always hold on to Smallville. We'll see you later. Don't think we forgot about you. Top tier patrons. We got to read there. We got to give shout outs. I love shouting out your name. You guys are important to us. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Thanks for giving to the show and, and keeping it going. And hopefully we'll do every season if uh, if, if you're here for us. Uh, let's do the shout outs, Tom. Good to see you. Let's rock and roll, baby. And I will be in Atlanta. Don't forget, March 4th. And here we go. Why don't you take it, Tom? All right. Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Janine R, Santiago M, Leah S, Little Lisa, Tom T, Sophie M, Betsy D, Liliana a, did All I do right. it right finally? Yes. yes. In our season two. Abhi P, Kimberly E, Michael H, Raj H. Ray. Fatima. Ray H. Ray. Ray Harada. Oh, Ray Harada. Fatima T, Karen, Apple M, Danielle B, 99 more. I think it's um, actually Fatima T, but. Leilani N. Leilani N. Leilani and Leilani and Catherine P. Brett G. Always hold on to Smallville. Estevan G. DJ Kento. Garrett W. Kimberly L. Justin S. Tom and Tony V. Rodolfo V. Jason W. Osama A. Lana rhymes with banana. Lana. It's Lana rhymes with banana. W. Nancy D. Brian G. Sarah W. Artoon K. Justin T. And Lucy and Jeremy G. I think DJ Kento added a T. I don't remember that T being there. But Kento, is that true? Anyway, there's R2 and K, Justin and Lucio, Jeremy G, Amanda R. Yeah. Teddy127, Michael P, Theo M. We just saw Michael P in Dallas, we did. by the way, I remember. Theo M, Ryan R, Grumpy Itis, 
not what Michael thinks. Jordan M, Hillary B, Craig G, Christy R, Pollyanna, Karen P, Derek G, Jorel, my dad, Richard S, not Richard Donner, Heather and G, Heather and Greg's, all right, Nico P, I made Talkville say butts. butts. Brian H, Georgina B, Eric K, Clark at Clark's M. What if I did it like a, I was like in a news announcer, but every word is like, I'm telling you a sentence like Clark's M, Kristen B, Takashi M, Kevin E, <laughs> Nanine W, Stephanie K, Darth Achilles, Finky, Tito G, <laughs> Mixter, Stephen F. Damn, who's that? Jeanette E, Dead Vid, Allison H, General Zod, Krauk, Clark backwards, Drew M, Aracillus R, Aracillus? Arcellus R. Big D. John Glover's Luscious Maine. Doug R. Tommy Z. Boston 68. Isabel. Cigar or Sager S. Corey L. Ivy Sam. Ivy and Sam. Mr. Home Arcade. Cal T. Amanda K. Jesse C. Lumberjack Claire M. Fourth favorite character underscore Zoe. Zoe. Scott and Dylan D. Brown. Joshua W. Green. Alice. What does it say? Karen Era. That's a new one. Karen it's another one for me M. to mess up. Kenira M. Carol de Supremo. El Don Supremo. El Don Supremo. Sarah Q2. Leslie V. Gary H. Tatiana S. Robert G. Natalia. Man, why did I take all these? Natalia G. Jewel Jules. Mick Burtz. Ginger M. You got the last one there. I'm not going to mess Yerevan up. Yerevan Plaza underscore XC. So wow, way Julie to keep it simple. Eye. Julie was there. She was in uh, Dallas. Hi, huh? Julie with one eye. Oh, nice. McBurt's Ginger M, Yerevan Plaza underscore XE. I love it. We got, I uh, can't do it without you. You know that. We really appreciate you. Thanks for supporting us. Keep supporting us. If you're enjoying this, so are we. We love it. All right, Tommy. I'll see you later, buddy. Later, bud. Later, bud.